Hey everybody, DJ here. This is going to be a series on Radeon Pro Render, and this is going to be on 3.0, so this is going to be a refresh of any of the other videos that I have done on this in the past, because there's been a lot of new updates. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. I'm also on Discord and on Patreon. The links are going to be below in the video description. And let's go ahead and just take a look at Pro Render. So if you go into Google and you type in Pro Render, you'll pretty much find the AMD Radeon Pro Render link right there. Go ahead and click on that. You can go down the list, check out the new stuff that they've done. There's a new 2.0 render, which I'll talk about very briefly in this video, but this is more for download and installation. Let's go down to the bottom here. And uh, what you'll see here is that there's a lot of different plugins. This is this series is going to be pretty much on Blender, but if you have any of these other ones, a lot of the principles will still apply for what I'm going to be talking about. And if we go way down the list here, you can see uh, some of the images that they have here, some uh, render examples. If you want to know what you could do with it, there's a lot of really great renders in here and examples. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go up to the area right here, and we're going to click on Learn More under Blender. It's going to bring you to this page. Go down the list, and if we see at the very bottom here, you're going to see system requirements. So just read this. Make sure that you have everything you need. Those of you who are using AMD Radeon uh, cards, this is a really great engine for you. And if you're an Apple user, it has uh, also support for um, Metal and other GPUs that Apple uses. So uh, that's a pretty great option for you if you want to use Blender, but you don't really have a decent render engine. So if we go up here, you can see that there's a download now button. Go ahead and click that. And it's going to take you to another page. And I'm going to provide this link to this page right here in the video description below. So you can just jump to this if you want. You can read the release notes if you want. But you can click this button here to download the actual plugin. Or down here, which you'll also want to do. I'm not going to cover it too much in this video. But you'll want to also download the material library for Windows or whatever your particular operating system is. Because there are some really great image textures that you can use for any render engine. And it provides you a really nice baseline for any materials that you actually want to just plug into your scene and not have to think too much about it. So go ahead and download both of those. And once they're downloaded, you'll see something that looks like this if you're on Windows. So you'll see I have right here the um, Radeon Pro Material Library here, which is an actual installer. And then I have a zip file right here. But my zip is a little bit different. This is 3.0.15, okay? Whereas this one is 3.0. And the reason why is I actually like to use the weekly builds. If you go to GitHub, and I'll provide a link in, below in the description so you can see where to get these, I like to use the weekly builds because they tend to be a little bit more stable and they have some new advantages um, and fixes, bug fixes, or new options for you to use. And if you basically go to the link where it says Radeon Pro Render Bl uh, Blender add-on here, and you go to code right here, go over to where it says tags, and then instead of tags, click on this right here that says releases. And you can download the weekly development builds right through here. And there are release notes telling you what's different. Now, if you're not going to use this, that's totally fine. It's up to you if you want to use this. It's a little bit more, you know, um, tricky sometimes. But uh, I prefer this. But if you're using the regular 3.0 build, it should be completely fine. And pretty much everything that I'm going to be covering will be uh, compatible with just the 3.0 renderer. So let's go ahead and open up Blender here, and uh, we're just going to open up a regular default cube. And what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to show you how to uninstall it first, because every time you download a new version, you'll need to basically remove it from your add-ons list and then install the new version. So if I go to Edit, Preferences, and then I go to Add-ons, and in the little search icon here, you're going to type in Pro Render. And you'll see right here that I have the... 3.0.15, but I'm going to remove it and show you how to do this from scratch just for those of you who don't know how to do this. So first you want to uncheck this, and then if you click the remove button here, you're going to, it's going to ask you, are you sure? You hit OK, and you're going to see this, okay? Don't worry, this is totally fine, all right? So let's uh, exit out of here, and then you're going to close Blender. You're going to open it back up. You're going to go to Edit, Preferences again. Type in Pro Render again. You're going to see it again. All right. Click the Remove button. Okay. Now it's gone. Just to make sure it's been set, we're going to close it down, open it back up, and double check once again. 
type in pro render and you'll see that now it's gone. So we've completely uninstalled it. It's been removed from the uh, add-ons list and we're gonna go to install and then we're going to go to, basically you need to navigate to where it's been saved. So if you go to your downloads, it will probably be in there. So you can do a search for it. Right here it says Radeon Pro Render for Blender 3.0.15 for Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And there it is from the drop down list right here. You want to click the little checkbox and there you go. Okay, let's go ahead and close that out. Now, in order to change to Pro Render, what you need to do is you need to go over to your render properties, go to the render engine, change it to Radeon Pro Render, and you'll see that now a lot of things have changed over here in your settings. If you click the little drop down right here and you don't see either your CPU or your graphics card being portrayed here. The reason is that you probably don't have an updated driver or you don't have a proper driver for your graphics card. And it'll say something like OCL uh, not used or something like that. There'll be something weird over here. So uh, what you'll need to do is make sure you go to either the NVIDIA website or go to your uh, AMD or wherever it is that you get your graphics card from and make sure that you have a proper uh, driver installed to make sure that you actually see these over here. And what you need to do every time you open this up is you have to actually go to a rendered view where it's going to basically load in the API settings, uh, which API just means like their version of how they like to render things. Um, it basically creates a file on your computer for how it renders things out. But before we do that, what you wanna do is you wanna go over here to sampling and go down to viewport and preview sampling. And for some reason, mine always sets to these values. What you wanna do is where it says minimum, samples change that to something like 16 and then for max we want that to be 32. you don't really want this to go above that because for certain graphics cards and cpus it doesn't really render properly okay uh, then below that for preview samples here just set this to something like 16 and we can close that drop down and then make sure your either graphics card or your cpu is checked on and then you're gonna go over here and change to the rendered view. So you can either click it up here or you can go and hit Z rendered and wait over here. It will load up your, uh, basically it's rendering up the API for it to render out your scenes properly. So you have to give it sometimes a couple minutes for it actually to uh, load everything up properly. So just give it a moment and wait. And there we go, it's all, it's all been uh, set up. And we, now we have this rendered view that's going on here. Now, immediately you may notice that some of the viewport rendering is not as, um, uh, it doesn't update as quickly as you may be used to in cycles, especially if you have the original 3.0 release and not the weekly build, you might not see this sort of grainy look when you're moving around. It might just show the outline of the shape or something. That's really just how this particular engine works. And I'll be, diving into how the engine works a little bit more as I do more of these videos. But in general, there's a little bit of a delay in some of the ways that um, the viewport rendering is done. However, the new, what's called 2.0 rendering system, which if we go up here, it's set to full. The 2.0 rendering system uses a Vulkan technology. It's a particular type of API. Um, and the way that it works is incredibly fast. You can get uh, very clean renders in very little time, um, but there are some issues that you might find with it as you work through this, um, this render engine. And I'm gonna try and point those out as we do more of these crash course videos, but just understand that it's still a work in progress, but there are some really great um, advantages that can be gained from using it. Now I'm gonna go over very briefly some of the interface stuff here. I'm not going to go into really materials or anything like that beyond like the very, very bare basics because this is just for download and installation. But if you go up here to the top left, you're going to see that there's a full setting. You also have a legacy view. So if I change this to solid mode, go to the legacy rendering system and then go to rendered, it's going to calculate a little bit differently. And you'll have to wait a minute for it to uh, establish the API and sort of build up the scene. So just give it a moment. And here we have uh, the legacy version. And you can see that it kind of, the way that it shades or uh, renders out in the viewport is a little bit more responsive. Um, and that's just 
how the legacy one works, it's a, uh, it's just a little bit faster in some of that just because it uses a different system. So if we go then to solid mode, go up here, and if we look down the list, you'll see there's a low setting. So if I go into low, go to rendered, it's um, basically kind of like Eevee. There's a very basic sort of like uh, render engine that's going on here that uses your GPU to sort of like establish um, a more simplified, uh, quicker way of doing some rendering for you. And if you don't have a compatible GPU, you may not see that option available. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Um, and then you also have a medium setting. And again, this is just, I'm just kind of showing you some of this stuff very quickly. Um, I haven't set any materials, but basically the medium will show a little bit more detail. It'll give a little bit more realism to your scene, but it still will look like a gaming engine. And then if we go to the high setting, uh, and if we did have materials, you would see this a little bit more obvious. There is an actual ray tracing that goes on with the high setting. We just can't see it right now. Um, and when you go around to those different ones, sometimes you might run into a little bit of a bug um, where the high setting looks weird. You'll just have to go back to low, then go to high, and it'll fix that issue. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, I just wanted to make a very quick video to show you that um, you know 3.0 is out and to show you how to basically just do a quick installation and get it working on your computer. Make sure that if you have any questions about installation or anything like that, that it gets resolved in this video and that we're all on the same page before we actually start to add materials, add HDRI lighting, and do all of the fun stuff that uh, this engine actually provides. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this tutorial, even just to know that 3.0 is out and ready for you to use and start um, playing with. Take some time, creatively play with this engine, add some materials if you want, if you can figure it out. Get used to the interface and see uh, some of the differences in the different um, in your different properties. And if you haven't yet, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.